Hey everyone, in this question we'll be looking at another derivatives question and we'll be taking a look at this formula. So hopefully you guys recognize this formula. It's the dreaded or you know not so dreaded quotient rule. Depends how you, you know, if you like it or not. So what does this question say? It says find the equation of the tangent line when x equals 1. So essentially um, I'm gonna give you a function and we'll see what we have to do. So if I give you a function f of x equals x minus 1 divided by x squared plus x plus 1 so make sure to copy this down if I say find the equation of a tangent line when x equals 1 what does that mean? well you have to realize that this obviously is talking about derivatives because the equation of the tangent line well what does that mean? a tangent line has the rule mx plus b or ax plus b where this is a linear relation well, why do we care about linear relations and tangent lines with derivatives I'm not sure if your teachers have told you this right I hope so but a derivative is nothing more than the slope of a line when you've been solving derivatives either through limit definition of derivatives product rule quotient rule chain rule whatever the rules all you are doing is finding the slope or rate of change of a function that's all you're doing. Cal 1 is about rates of change, about slopes, and you do that through derivatives. That's the point. Cal 2 is the opposite. You are given the derivative or the slope, and you must find the antiderivative, the original function. So I hope that kind of like sheds some light on what you are doing. So in this case, we'd have to find the derivative of this function before finding the equation of the tangent line. So how are we going to derive this function? Well, in this case, you see that you have some type of division. So, you're going to use the quotient rule. So, first thing to do is label your f of x and your g of x. That's what I like to do. You could do it your own way, but this is obviously uh, an easy way as well. So, the rule says to do... So, f prime of x is going to be... The rule says to do g of x, f prime of x. So, I'm going to recopy g of x. It says don't touch your g of x but derive your f of x. What's the derivative of x minus 1? Just 1, right? What does it then say? It says minus, you then do f of x, which is x minus 1, so don't touch your f of x, but derive your g of x. So what's the derivative of g of x? x squared becomes 2x, x becomes 1, and the 1 goes away. There's your numerator. And what's your denominator? g of x prime. What's g of x? It's x squared plus x plus 1 and they say to square that. No problem. What is going to be the next step? The next step will be to FOIL everything. This multiplied by 1 will simply remain. Right? This, what I would like to do and what you guys should do is keep the minus sign, FOIL this first within a bracket. So 2x squared plus x minus 2x minus 1 right divided by the same denominator again it's a lot of copying but when you're doing a test it's very important to copy everything so that your teacher sees that you know you know what you're talking about alright so what's gonna be left here what I'm gonna do here is remember once you have the minus sign on the outside you have to change every sign. That is super important guys, don't forget that. That's why I left the minus sign and that's why I left the bracket. Okay? So, essentially you'll have x squared minus 2x squared, so you'll have negative x squared, right? Then you'll have x minus, first you have to deal with this, right? Bed mass, brackets first. x minus 2x is negative x. Then you have a minus negative x, which will be a plus. So x plus x, you'll have plus 2x, right? And then you'll have 1 minus minus 1, which is plus 2. So you see how the signs can really screw you up if you don't put the brackets. So please make sure to put the brackets, guys, okay? x squared plus x plus 1, and that is all squared. So we're almost done. What do we do at this step? So... Is there anything else I can do in this derivative? You can't cancel, you can't expand anything, you're basically done. You've done your 
you found your derivative of the original function, right? So this is the derivative of the original function. This is the slope, right? But it's asking you to find the equation of the tangent line at x equals 1. So what you can do is plug in x equals 1 in every term, right? So here you'll have negative 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 2. So make sure to not skip the step. Show your teachers this. It's very important. 1 squared plus 1 plus 1. That's all squared. Right? So what's going to be left in your numerator? Essentially, you'll have negative 1 squared. You might think that that will give you 1. Be careful. Is that going to give you 1? You have to really make sure that you get the right answer. Negative 1 squared, you would think it's 1. Okay? But you have to remember that this is a negative x squared. So really, what that is, is this. Okay, this is where bed mass is important. Really, you have this. Sorry for the brackets there. You have the number squared, then times negative 1. Remember, bed mass, brackets, exponent, then you can apply the multiplication. So really, this is going to be 1 squared is 1 times negative 1. Okay, be careful, guys. Just bed mass, that's all. Okay, this is going to be 3 squared, which will be 9, right? What's going to happen here? You just simply you know, finish it off. Negative 1 plus 4 is going to be 3 over 9. Make sure to reduce, guys. 1 third. So what it, what's this 1 third? This is the numerical number or the numerical answer for the slope of the initial function, or this is the numerical value of the derivative at x equals 1. This is basically your slope. So, they want the equation of the tangent line, right? So, we're, we're almost there. y equals mx plus b, right? We have m. y equals 1 third x plus b. Sorry, guys, that's a horrible b. I'm sure you guys can notice that my writing is not the best. <laughs> but bear with me. I, I just hope you understand the question. That, that's what's most important. So, remember, at this point, we have our y equals 1 third x plus b. What do we need now? We want to know b, right? Because we want to know our initial value. That means we need an x and a y. Do we have an x and a y? Yes, we do. We have coordinates, right? What coordinates do we have? Well, initially, remember what the question said. When you do a derivative, right? When you do the derivative of something, what will the left side equal? Right? The derivative will always equal something. It's going to equal 0. You remember that. When you derive something, the left side will be equal to 0. Okay? So, um, why is that? Because if you look at the original function, guys, okay? This, this is the real reason why you have it equaling to 0. When you plug in here your x equals 1, right? Plug that in here. What will you get? 1 minus 1 is 0. Over this will not matter, right? You'll get 0. So this is the real reason why your function will equal 0. So, it's not necessary that the derivative will equal 0. But essentially that you're at x equals 1, your original function yields a y coordinate of 0. Okay, that's the real reason. So when you come back down here, you do essentially have an x and a y coordinate from the original function, right? 1, 0. So this is what you plug in here. So what will that give you? 0 equals 1 third times 1 plus b. This will be 1 third. Remember, you have to isolate b by bringing this over. b will be equal to negative 1 third. So, your final answer is 1 third x minus 1 third. And once again, you are done. Alright guys, so I hope I helped in a question like this. If you have any other questions, make sure to you know, send us an email or give us a call. And we'll be glad to answer any of your questions you know, regarding this type of question or any others that you might have if you have a test coming up. Alright guys?